can you please explain how the animals on the ark spread across the world after the flood? They couldn't all swim across the oceans. Oh, no, no, definitely not. Actually, it's really very simple to explain that. Uh, due to the events that started the flood, well, there was uh, a mile deep, thick layer of water, 10 to 11 miles down. That's the water below mentioned in day two of Genesis chapter one. It's about 900 degrees hot. And that is the water that burst forth and broke the Pangaea, one continent, that was created on day three, uh, but it broken it apart into the continents we know today. And because they're floating on a layer of water, just like boats, they can move apart very quickly. Now, that's how they broke apart. But the same thing causes one ice age because you've got tremendous amounts of hot water mixing with warm seas that already existed on the surface. That's the water from Genesis chapter one, day one. And, of course, you have a tremendous amount of volcanic activity. When the earth broke open, it broke open a lot. Mm -hmm. And you have a lot of volcanic ash, as well as a lot of hot water coming from below. And that ash erupts and goes into the atmosphere, blocking out sunlight. And that causes the atmosphere to cool very quickly. And so this is what causes the ice age, cold air with very hot, very moist water evaporating very quickly into that cold atmosphere. And the first uh, time that we see ice and snow in the Bible is in the book of Job. Uh, Job is approximately 350 years after the flood. And during that one ice age, what happens? Well, it lasted only for about, we think at best, 700 years. Um, it will increase in intensity, perhaps for the first roughly 500. But then the volcanoes themselves will eventually calm down and stop. The ash will come down by precipitation. And um, eventually then the sunlight will come back in and melt the ice back. But during that time, tremendous amounts of water were then stored in the polar ice caps, far larger than today. And the oceans go down two to 300 feet in elevation. And if you take a look, as we have maps in our presentation on the waters cleaved, if you have maps of the world without water, uh, there are many areas of continental shelf, even land bridges from Southeast Asia to Australia, a land bridge, huge land bridge from Siberia to Alaska. And when the water goes down two to 300 feet, they become dry, and people and animals simply walked to Australia. They walked to North America, and from there they walk south until they get to South America. And so what happens at the end of the Ice Age when, they, again, the, the precipitation of the ash comes down, the atmosphere warms up, the ice melts back to roughly where it is today, the oceans rise two to 300 feet, and what was dry land becomes submerged and cuts them off. Uh, and so it's really fairly easy to see if you'll take a look at the maps. Fantastic explanation. Thank you so much, Grady.